On older vehicles, it was quite popular to have a drum and hub and tapered axle shafts. Ford, Dodge, Jeep, and others used this five on five and a half inch bolt circle tapered axle shaft hub with a castellated nut and the need to remove this hub with a special puller. To meet this need, we turn to the 7394 OTC puller, a quality USA made tool. The hub puller consists of a flange, three arms that fit over the flange, a hex head screw and a wing wrench that can be hit with a hammer if you choose not to use an impact tool. This is impact tool grade steel and threads so you can use an impact socket on the hex head screw. In this case the studs are left hand thread because this is a left side of a Jeep, Chrysler product, and other vehicles that use left-hand threads on vintage vehicles on the left-hand side of the vehicle. With a five-on, five-and-a-half inch bolt circle, we're able to use this tool readily without the need for an adapter plate. The 7394 tool is designed for use on six to eight inch bolt circles. This happens to be five-and-a-half inch and it works just fine we don't need an adapter. The three arms fit to these two studs and this opposite stud. The center bolt is aligned with the axle shaft. This is a trial fit. I'll take the tool off now and remove the axle nut. We'll put it back in place as you see it here and I'll demonstrate how to pull the drum and hub as an assembly. To remove the nut, which is a right hand thread, I'm using a CP7748 gun. This half inch gun sourced through any retail outlet that handles Chicago Pneumatic does a great job both removing and installing nuts and bolts. <coughs> Nut and washer now removed. You can see the key. I will be installing the hub puller 7394 and removing the drum and hub as an assembly. With the arms aligned properly and each one of these nuts seated the stem should align directly with the center of the axle shaft. This was the left side of the vehicle. They're all snug and we're ready to apply force to the hub puller. We have two choices here. We can use the wing wrench like this and a hammer driving force against here and here to turn the screw in and cause the drum and hub to pull outward. Also, since this is a high quality tool, again made in USA and designed for impact force, we can use the air gun and a socket on the hex end to apply the force to the end of the axle and pull the drum and hub assembly outward. We're using an inch and an eighth six point socket of impact design for this particular application. I'll start with the lower force. I'm wearing my earplugs and again I'm using impact grade six point sockets. The nuts are tight. Each one of these arms is flush against the drum hub and the stem is on center with the axle shaft. Now I have a considerable amount of force on there and I'll take advantage of one of the features of impact. I'm going to tap on the end of the stem. I'm not going to beat on it. I'm going to tap sharply on it. The intent here is not to drive excessive force toward the drum and hub which might damage the axle bearing or worse. Now I'll go back to the use of the impact force. 
there's a considerable amount of pressure between this point and the drum and hub. Be very cautious and safe. At this point I'll make sure that these nuts are still secure. And again apply force with caution to the stem. There's considerable force at this stage and I don't want to damage the wheel studs. Back in the day, to remove the brake drum for brake service, this tool was necessary. This is a powerful gun and I'm not applying full impact force. The drum just came loose. You heard that audible sound. Now we can remove the tool and the drum, as you can see, the drum is now free of the axle shaft. Just as this drum may have been on here for a half a century, these brake shoes are also possibly that old. Given those conditions, be very cautious in working around the brake lining. Wear a respirator. Do not inhale the brake dust as it likely contains asbestos. You should be able to move the drum off the axle shaft at this point. There's no damage to the wheel studs. We use great caution not to put excessive force despite the fact that it takes considerable force to remove the hub and drum. We applied the minimal amount and the sharp wrap on the end of the stem relieved a lot of that tension. You can see the key. The brakes are now accessible and you could remove the axle shaft if that was your intent. Notice the rust in this area. One of the reasons for the difficulty in removing the hub and drum is the buildup of rust. We're now done with this side. As we move to the right side of the vehicle, it's worth noting that without the correct tools, in this case, some time ago, someone tried to remove this drum and hub with just a hammer. This axle shaft is ruined and a valuable brake drum has been damaged. Despite all of the force that was used here, a hammer that ruined an axle shaft and everything else, this drum and hub would not come off. This is the side of the vehicle with right hand threads. Make sure that the nuts are securely seated so that the tool is square with the drum and the hub. Turn the stem in. Make sure the stem remains on center. If not, reposition your tool if necessary to get the stem on center. We'll use impact force on the stem again and then tap on the end of the stem to dislodge the drum and hub. Considering the force involved, make sure that you use goggles to protect your eyes when handling impact tools and impact force. off. For those working with vintage cars that have smaller bolt circles than five on five and a half, this plate adapter from OTC, the 6574-1, 
enables bolting the plate to the OEM studs for the hub wheel assembly and using these bolts to the three legs of the hub puller. With the addition of this heavy duty 6574-1 adapter plate you can use the 7394 hub puller the three legs of the hub puller bolting to these three points and remove the hub and drum assembly on vehicles that have smaller bolt circles.